Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of Jitbag Compose. So I will show you how to create a Jitbag Compose project in Android Studio. Then I will show you how to create simple UI component like a text or a button using Jitbag Compose. So let's actually get it started. Okay, let's start by creating a Jitbag Compose project. Let's go to file, new, click on new project. And here from the template, as you can see, we have empty compose activity. We can choose that. If you don't have this template, then you probably have an old version of Android Studio. Make sure to update your Android Studio, then you should have this template. So click on next, and here you choose the project name and the package name. So we're just gonna keep the default uh, values here and click on finish. Wait some time. It might take a little bit uh, of time when you just create your first Jitbag Compose because it's gonna download some dependencies and some libraries. So you need actually to wait until Gradle is done. First of all, I don't want you to get distracted by these default things, so remove them. And let's also delete this set content function. And here's our activity, as you can see. The first thing you can notice is the activity here extends from component activity. And here we have on create function. And by the way, we of course have the other lifecycle callbacks like on resume and like on pause and so. So this is just an activity. Now, if you came from XML, you probably know the set content view function, this one. And in here, we just used to pass the, the layout, the ID of our layout for this activity. But in here, we of course don't have that. But now in Compose, we actually have another function called set content. So we can call that, as you can see, this function here. And now every single UI element that you add inside the set content function should be a compose function. So a compose function also called composable. And we have some default composables that come from Android. So we can actually use the text composable to show a text. So in here we can say hello world or anything. Let's say welcome, for example welcome land of coding now let's run the app and see our text okay as you can see this is the text shows at the top of the screen now we can also uh, adjust on this text we can add some more attributes to this text composable so like we can change the color for example we can say color and the color here is an attribute inside the text composable function so to change the color let's actually make it red for example like that we could also change the font size we can and by the way we also use sp unit in compose we can make this 22 sp and to add sp here you can use dot dot sp and that's how we add units in compose now we also can change many things in here like the font weight uh, we can make this font weight dot bold and we also have font style you can also add a font style object here and we actually have many things if you want to see all of these things you can again go to the implementation of the text composable here and here you have all the attributes so let me go through this so we have the text which we actually passed the modifier and the modifier here we're going to cover that in a later video but just to give you a brief idea for the modifier attribute here the modifier actually is an entry point for a common uh, functions like if you want to add some padding, if you want to add a background, if you want to clip the background, you want to add some borders. So the modifier actually gives you the, the accessibility for all of those functions. But as I said, we're going to cover that in a later video. So here we have the color, the font size, the font style, font weight, font family. We can actually add a font letter spacing if you want to add spacing between each letter text decoration uh, so you can actually add a text decoration object line height overflow here you actually specify what you want to show if you have an overflow text we have soft wrap i'm not sure what the soft wrap is i've never used it but anyways we have the max lines you can specify how many lines you want to show in that text on text layout i also have not used that and here we have the style which is the text style so let's actually get back and let's run the app to see uh, the color and the font size and the font weight. Let's see that. And as you can see, here's our text. It took all these values and applied it on our text. Now I'm going to show you how to create your own compose function. So in the same file, we can actually go here outside of our class. We can annotate this with a composable. And that's how we actually create a compose function. We need to annotate it with composable and then we create the function. So we can say function. Then you specify the name of that function. By the way, in compose functions, 
we start the first letter as a capital letter. So I'm going to call this greeting like this. And here we pass the name, which is a string. And we open color brackets. Now we describe the UI. So I'm just going to copy this, put it in here. And I'm just going to change the land of coding here to name. Now we simply can call this greeting function in here. We can say greeting and we want to create land of coding. Let's launch the app. We will also get the same result. So as you can see, we got the same result. Okay, now let's move to other default composables. So we talked about text composable. Now we also have button if you want to show a button. And here you have the only click callback. Inside here, you can actually do any action you want. So we're just going to print, you can say click, for example. And now let's actually delete this scope. And we have content attribute. And we can open color brackets. And inside the content here, we basically describe how our button is going to look like. And inside here, we can actually use any composable function. So we can say text, for example, and we can say button. Now let's run the app to see our button. I'm going to open the look at here. And here's a button, as you can see. Let's actually click here. As you can see, we got this click. Now let me comment this. We also have icon in here. We need to pass a painter object. So let's say you have an icon inside your drawable file and you want to get that as a painter object. You can use the painter resource composable. So this composable, you can use it to get your drawable. And in here, you just pass the ID of that. So you can say r.drawable. I don't have any icon now, so I'm just gonna add this default icon. And for the content description, you can just describe your icon or you can pass null. And we also have many attributes here. So for example, the tint attribute, let's make this color dot black. Let's see how that's gonna look like. Okay, as you can see, this is the icon. So this is what the icon composable does. Now we also have the image composable to show an image. So we can say image. It's the same actually. We need to pass a painter resource. We can just pass anything, so I'm going to pass the default icon here, and here we pass null. As you can see, I hope you can see that, it's kind of white, but anyways, now let's move to the text field composable. So text field, and the text field in Compose work a little bit different, so I won't cover that in here, but I just want to let you know that there's a text field composable. So for the value, pass into string, on value change, open curly brackets and leave that empty. And as I said, I will explain this later because it needs a special handling. Now let's run the app to see the text field. And as you can see, this is the text field. And of course now we can type because as I said, we need a special handling for this text field. And you will see that in the upcoming videos. Now one of the attributes that you can add to this text field is the label. And in here we can actually say text. So you can design or you can describe what your label looks like. And we just can add label. Let's see what that label does. And as you can see, it's just like a hint. If we click here, the hint goes up and we can type down here. And if you are wondering how we can create our own text field, there is actually a composable called basic text field. So this is something advanced that I, w I don't want to cover in this video. There will be a special video for uh, text fields. So we will cover that later. Let's actually comment that and let's move to the next composable we have, which is the floating. Let me hide this. The floating action button. So this is just a button, floating action button. And here we can describe what that floating action button looks like. So we can add, for example, icon or we can add a text. So let's actually add icon here and we can and let's add any icon. And for the content description, I'm going to pass that null. Let's launch the app to see that floating action button. Okay, as you can see, this actually looks big. But um, if you want to actually reduce the size, you can use the modifier that I told you about. But uh, I don't want to get you confused by that. So let's actually keep this big for now. And you will see how to change the size later. Now we also have extended floating action button. So this is just an action button but an extended one so inside the text attribute here you basically add the text you want to show in this floating action button so i'll just say add 
and I'm gonna reformat this by clicking Ctrl Alt and L now we also have an attribute for the icon so we can add icon here we can say icon painter resource are dot drawable dot anything and I will just pass null here and I'm just gonna reformat this so like that I'm gonna put everything in a separated line this like here and this here click enter and put that here now we also have the background attribute here here we can actually specify the background color of this floating action button we can say color dot white and let's see that as you can see here's the floating action button again for the size again for the size you can actually change that by the modifier but i don't want to cover that in this video because it's going to take some time and the last thing i want to talk about in this video is if we actually place two uis together let's actually put the grading composable here with the button composable let's see what's going to happen let's launch the app and let's wait as you can see the button here overlapped this text and this happened because we haven't specified where we want to position each composable and we simply can do that with compose layouts so we have columns we have rows and we also have box so i'm gonna cover those layouts in the next video thank you so much for watching hope you have a great day catch you in the next one